All right, guys, we're going to finish up Chapter 8, and we're going to finish it up by talking about the activity series. Now, the activity series, when we talk about activity, it's the ability of an element to react, um, meaning it's very easy for it to react. It's very highly reactive. Um, so what we're looking at is the activity series is a list of elements organized according to the activities from the highest to the lowest, meaning the guys up at the very top, those are going to be the most reactive, and on the bottom, they're going to be the least. Okay, so the very top are the highly reactive elements, and on the bottom is going to be the least. And the activity series is broken up into um, metals and nonmetals, because obviously when we're talking about chemical reactions, uh, metals replace metals and nonmetals replace nonmetals. Now, metals, when they are on top or very high, they have a greater reactivity. They, it's very easy for them to lose electrons. Uh, it's easy, easier for them to become cations. When nonmetals are on the top of that list, it's greatly, or greater activity and easier to gain electrons. Okay, and they very easily become anions. So we use the activity series in our class to predict whether single replacement reactions will occur. And again, we said the most reactive is on top, so an element can replace anything below it, but it can't replace anything above it. So, of course, in a single replacement reaction, uh, the reactants are going to be an element plus a compound. So if that element is above the similar element in the compound, then it'll replace it. If it's below it, then it won't replace it and the chemical reaction won't happen. So let's look at some examples. Here we have zinc and hydrochloric acid. Okay, zinc is our element, it's just Zn. So what we do is we check anytime we write an element, is it a part of Brinkelhoff? Is it a diatomic molecule? And zinc is not, so we just leave it as zinc as Zn. And here we have hydrochloric acid. Remember the hydro prefix tells us that it is a binary acid. So we have hydrogen bonded to one other thing, and that other thing is going to be chlorine. So we crisscross these guys, we have plus one, minus one, and we're going to get HCl. Okay, in our products, and to have products, this chemical reaction actually has to happen. So we look on our activity series list, and it's just a list. You can find it on page 266 of your book, um, or you can just Google up activity series, and it'll probably come up. Uh, we look and we see that zinc is above hydrogen. So this chemical reaction is going to happen. So zinc and hydrogen are going to switch places. And zinc is now going to be bonded to chlorine. So hydrogen's by itself. It's a diatomic, so we put H2. And then we crisscross zinc with chlorine. Zinc is always plus 2, and chlorine's negative 1 because it's in group 17. We crisscross those guys, and we get ZnCl2. Okay, and then we would go ahead and we would balance this chemical reaction after that. So written all nice and neat. You can see it written out like this. If it's balanced, we have a 2 right here for the coefficient. Our next example we have is calcium and lead to nitrate. So first of all, let's write this out. We have calcium, which is Ca, and then we have lead to nitrate. So we have Pb for lead, and we know that's lead 2, so it's a plus 2 oxidation number. And then nitrate is a polyatomic. It's NO3, and it has a negative 1 charge. So we crisscross these guys and we get Pb NO3 2. And guys, if you're having any problems on crisscrossing, uh, you can go back and watch the forming ionic compounds practice problems, and it'll help you with that. Okay, so now that we've made our reactants, let's look and see that calcium is going to replace, try to replace lead. So we look on our activity series, and yes, calcium is above lead, so they're going to switch places. So now calcium is going to be bonded to nitrate. So lead is just written by itself. It's not a diatomic, so we leave it as that. And then we'll have calcium, which is just Ca, plus 2 oxidation number because it's in group 2. And then NO3 for nitrate. Crisscross these guys, and we get Ca, NO3, 2. And that's already balanced for us. It's very nice and neat. Okay, written all nice and neat looks like that. Now, in our next reaction, we have copper and lithium sulfate. And copper is Cu. It's not a diatomic. And then we have lithium sulfate. So we have lithium bonded to sulfate, which is SO4. 
Lithium is going to be plus one. Sulfate is going to be negative two. So we crisscross these guys and we get Li parenthesis, or Li2, parent, or we don't need the parentheses here, but just SO4. Okay, so here's our reactants. Let's look. Lithium and, chlor or lithium and copper are going to try to switch places. But we see that lithium is above copper. So this reaction can't happen because copper is on the bottom. Okay, so if copper is on the bottom, this reaction can't happen. And we simply get a no reaction. On our next one here, we have bromine and iron 2 chloride. So bromine is just Br. And we give it a 2 because it's a diatomic. It's a part of Brinkelhoff. Then we have iron 2 chloride. Iron is Fe. And it has a plus 2 oxidation number. And then chloride, since it ends in IDE, it's just chlorine. And it's a negative 1 oxidation number. We crisscross these guys and we get FeCl2. So we check and we see, we see that bromine is going to be switching places or trying to switch places with chlorine. Because remember, nonmetals replace nonmetals. So bromine is going to be lower than chlorine. Bromine's not on top, so the reaction does not happen. 